G'day there folks, welcome back to my channel. Today we're diving headfirst into a photography challenge that might make your jaw drop. That's right people, you read the title and know your eyes aren't painted on, this is true. I've got some HP5 film and I'm about to push the boundaries of HP5 like never before. Brace yourself folks, this is going to be a wild ride. Or it will just be a mildly entertaining video with pretty pictures if you're not a film photographer. Now before we get started, let's address the hilarity of the situation. Shooting at 128,000 ISO means daytime wide open apertures are going to be nowhere in sight. I don't think I went lower than f22 for my test shots. That's smaller than my patience for Kodak's price hikes. To tackle this audacious task, I'm going to override the ISO on my Canon EOS 300 and set it to 6400 ISO, then I'll dial in a negative one exposure compensation to tame the overwhelming light. Let's see if we can pull this off. Now this is just an experiment, so I've loaded nine frames into this bulk canister from a fresh bulk roll of HP5. Uh, I'm just going to go around the house and in the kitchen and find some things that I can take photos of and I wanted to look at some different situations so I could get some good examples with different exposure latitudes. Uh, I used an incident meter as well as the camera's meter uh, and it surprisingly turned out very similar. I'm pretty happy with the way the camera is. Surprise, surprise everyone. The Canon EOS 300 is actually holding its ground remarkably well. The exposures are shockingly accurate considering the extreme conditions. Hats off to you, my dependable camera. Now it's time to test this high speed film in various lighting scenarios. Keep in mind when pushing film to such a stratospheric ISO, the effective exposure sensitivity becomes narrower than the width of a hair. Talk about threading the needle. Hold on to your hats people because these photos have turned out way better than expected. The Ilford HP5 has delivered impressive contrast and detail, even in this extreme experiment. I mean, honestly, I wasn't worried at all. Well, maybe just a little. Now let's take a moment to talk about how we achieve these stunning results. We use an extended semi-stand development technique. When film is pushed to higher ISOs, the grain tends to become more noticeable and can impact the overall image quality. However, ascorbic acid, which is a key ingredient of Xtol and is also just vitamin C, helps mitigate this issue. It acts as a grain softener, effectively reducing the sharpness and prominence of individual grain particles. The softening effect of ascorbic acid is achieved by its action on the grain's edges. It acts as a gentle reducer, selectively affecting the grain boundaries while leaving the image forming silver intact. This softening effect results in smoother transitions between the grain particles, making the grain less apparent to the viewer's eye. The reduction of grain prominence is particularly advantageous for push film, as the higher ISOs inherently lead to more visible grain. By using Xtol, photographers can achieve a more aesthetically pleasing and balanced grain structure, preserving the details while minimising the distracting aspects of graininess. It's important to note that while ascorbic acid based developers like Xtol can reduce grain prominence, they do not eliminate grain entirely. Grain is an inherent characteristic of film photography and us film photographers embrace its presence as part of the medium's unique aesthetic. However, for those seeking to minimise the grain's impact, Xtol proves to be an excellent choice due to its ability to soften grain edges and deliver a more refined appearance at the cost of minor reductions in sharpness. You can also use other high-speed developers like Ilford's Microfen. Now, why are we doing semi-stand development? Well, it negates visible bromide drag, which I went over in a previous video. This ensures an even development across the entire roll of film. Xtol performs its film pushing function better over an extended period of time. In this case, I'll be semi-stand developing for 135 minutes with agitations every 15 minutes. This is at a temperature of 22 degrees Celsius. This is different from the usual 20 degrees that we use when developing film. Why is that? Well, it's a warm winter day here in Brisbane, Australia, and since we're developing for a lengthy period, the solution will regulate to the ambient temperature, so it's important to adjust your time accordingly. And wow, these results certainly do speak for themselves. These photos are oozing with stunning contrast and depth. Pushing the limits definitely paid off. Who would have thunk that HP5 can produce totally usable results at 128,000 ISO? It just goes to show how great modern film and film chemicals are, and also how Grainy Days needs to pump up his numbers when he shoots HP5. I can't wait to hit the streets at night for some high contrast handheld photography, or maybe even some daytime handheld pinhole photography. And make sure you subscribe to see that future video. 
Thank you so, so much for joining me in this crazy adventure. I will see you on the next one. 300, 300, 300, 300. EOS 300 and set it to 6400 ISO.